A volcanic eruption that was only seen by ISS. Otherwise, it would not have been known that it was taking place. Astronauts aboard the ISS have captured a spectacular, well, many images of the Reykoki volcano eruption. Now we know that there are many times that even pilots uh, that are en route above the, these areas capture and report the images of volcanic eruptions even though no one knows that they're taking place. Now this is a recent photo, series of photos captured by ISS, NASA images. This is on Volcano Discovery and Sputnik News. These new photos from the International Space Station taken June 21st show the thick brown volcanic ash plume rising after the eruption of the uninhabited Reykoki volcano. It's in Northwest Pacific Ocean. It seems that we have an uptick of volcanic eruptions and earthquake activity around the Pacific Ring of Fire, especially now lately even on the West Coast, Oregon and California. But last week the volcano erupted there for the first time in almost 100 years. It caused plumes to billow from the crater. The most recent previous eruption at Raikoki was in 1924. The one before that was in 1778. Reykoki is located near the center of the Kuril Island chain in the Sea of Okhotsk in the Northwest Pacific Ocean. It's at the level of the Aleutian Islands. NASA wrote in June 22nd press release several satellites as well as astro astronauts on the International Space Station observed as the thick plume rose and then steamed east as it was pulled into the circulation of a storm in the North Pacific. According to the Volcanic, Volcanic Ash Advisory Centers in Tokyo, Japan and Anchorage, Alaska, the plume may have reached an altitude as high as 8 miles. Data from the Calypso satellite launched in 2006 by NASA and the French government space agency CNES suggests that parts of the plume may have reached even 10 miles up. What spectacular, what a spectacular image ISS has taken reminds me of the classic Sarichev Peak astronaut photograph of an eruption in the Kirills from about 10 years ago. This is what Simon Karn, volcanologist at Michigan Tech, NASA reports in its release. The officials also noted that the ring of clouds at the base of the volcano appears to have been formed by the condensation of water vapor. So, you know, these volcanoes, once they erupt, they create their own weather systems. They even have lightning uh, and then rain because they collect uh, a difference of uh, humidity. Now, the ring of white puffy clouds at the base of the column might be a sign of ambient air being drawn into the column and the condensation of water vapor, or it could be a rising plume from interaction between magma and seawater because Reykjok is a small island and flows likely do enter the water. This is what Karna added. According to the press release, Reykjok's most recent eruption came as a surprise. There we go. Because as we know, these places are uninhabited. So the only way you actually know that they're going on when they have an eruption is either, uh, well, having a seismometer right there or having someone observe it from the sky, for example, pilots or ast astronauts. Now, it says here, the condensation of water vapor could be rising plume from interaction between magma and seawater because Reykoki is a small island and flows likely enter the water. According to the press release, Reykoki's most recent eruption came as a surprise. Satellites have also been monitoring the ash that's viewed from the volcano since rock and volcanic gas glass fragments, as we know, can pose a very serious hazard to aircraft, according to the press release. Well, that's another thing. You know, you can have, you, there's a very, very frequently flied route from there, 
And uh, unless pilots know that there's an eruption, they won't be um, changing their, uh, their routing, their uh, path, their flight path. And it could be a very disastrous consequence if they fly into these um, dangerous volcanic ashes. Satellites have also been monitoring the movement of the sulfur dioxide, the SO2, and other volcanic gases released by the explosion. Toxic gases may have already reached the stratosphere, the second layer of Earth's atmosphere. Karn said the persistence of large SO2 amounts at sulfur dioxide over the last two days also indicates stratospheric injection. And now as per the volcano discovery, the Ray Koki Volcano News and Activity Updates. It's a volcano in the Kuril Islands. Incredible images of eruption column from space showing gravity waves. NASA published an amazing photograph of the circular eruption column topping out at around 43,000 feet, that's 13 kilometers altitude, during the peak phase of activity around noon June 22nd local time, it beautifully displays circular gravity waves in the plume head created by the overshooting and falling back of the ash gas mixture of the plume at maximum height, where the plume's buoyancy has decreased to zero in the thinner atmosphere at altitude. These waves are similar to the circular waves created on the water surface when a small object, that is a stone, falls into it and causes local displacement of the water that then spreads out in expanding circles. Now, information about the Koki volcano. It's a stratovolcano, 1,808 feet high at the central Kirils, the Kiril Islands. It has a volcanic ash advisory now. Uh, as it stands today, Explosive activity does continue. Volcanic Ash Advisory Center, the VAAC, Anchorage warned about a volcanic ash plume that rose up to 80, uh, 38,000 feet, that's 11,600 meters, altitude or flight level, 380, and is moving at 25 kilometers in west direction. Explosive activity continues. Volcanic Ash Advisory, Anchorage warned Volcanic ash plume rose 38,000 feet, moving 25 kilometers direction. And what more do we have on this? Minor activity, current status, or eruption warning. Three out of five. And it's still going. As we said, the eruption previous ones were 1924, 1778, 1765, and of course today. It's still ongoing, that is. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.